Hi, Sarah. I'm very happy to, to meet you and thank you for participating in this interview. I want to ask you something about you, about your experience. So, can you introduce yourself, uh, your activities, your professional uh, um, development, uh, and uh, let us know something about you and your experience in Open? Okay. Um, Hi, uh, I'm uh, the editor-in-chief uh, in Rome for Open, uh, that is an um, online uh, uh, newspaper. Um, I'm specialized in investigative journalism and court chronicle. And uh, before starting this new, um, I mean, this new idea, this new project, uh, I was. Um, uh, the editor in chief for the investigative department in Il Messaggero, that is a um, newspaper very old in Rome. Um, before of that, uh, I've been in uh, three or four other newspapers, but this is my first experience uh, in an um, only online uh, uh, news uh, product. So I, I'm feeling, um, and I hope I will explain something more, uh, how different could be and what you can learn uh, from traditional journalism. Mm -hmm. So what are the main challenges to face uh, in the contemporary journalism? Now in particular, considering that you have changed your experience from traditional media to, uh, to you know, new, uh, innovative uh, uh, media content and news uh, content. Um, I think that the, um, you feel uh, in uh, you are in um, in the middle of two different uh, sensation. Uh, on the one hand, uh, you feel uh, I mean information coming all the time on you, and you facing this uh, uh, ocean of um, news uh, coming uh, constantly, um, never stopping. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, you have to find the way to say something different uh, because in, for, we are uh, I mean, a small journal, uh, uh, a small new, um, news um, uh, project, uh, so we have to, to stand and take a, a position uh, and to be, I mean, uh, to let people know what we are and why they have to uh, look at us uh, and not to traditional or very old and famous uh, um, websites. So all the time I feel in this uh, to in the middle of these uh, um, energies, and sometimes I feel that oh, I mean I'm pushed and pulled in different directions. Uh, but I think that maybe. Uh, facing uh, this uh, new frontier, you have to keep in mind, uh, I will say three things that I feel important. Um, first of all, uh, you have to keep a distance from everything is explained, is, uh, I mean, happening uh, all the time. So to keep cool and try to look at everything uh, uh, from the perspective of um, people that uh, have to understand what is important and what not. So not, don't cry, don't shout if it's not necessary, and shout only if it is very important. Um, secondly, I think that uh, the thing is, uh, especially now on the web, uh, the accountability. So you have to be uh, Mm, strict on facts and not to mm, go around because um, on the web you can find a lot of things that are not really uh, explained and uh, people uh, talking of things that they not, don't know very well. So you have to be mm, stri I mean to, to keep tight on the facts and to try to be as accountable uh, as you can be. And if you take a wrong step, uh, you have to say that you, you were wrong uh, to your uh, audience. Maybe in the past or in the newspaper, the traditional newspaper, journalists don't do uh, things like that. Uh, but on the web, uh, you 
you have to be, I mean, so honest uh, to say sorry if there's something wrong uh, and to keep going uh, but say, okay, I take a lesson from what happened if, if I say something wrong. And the third thing is say, I think is saying, um, keeping in mind who you are when you are um, explaining something. So uh, you, I mean, because of the web that is so confused at time by time, you have to say, okay, who I am and why I am explaining, um, I'm um, talking about these facts. Um, and if you say, it, okay, uh, Honestly, and you say, okay, for, for example, we are a, a newspaper done from very young journalists, um, often by uh, girls or ladies. There are the majority in our uh, newsroom. And I think that this perspective has to be um, explained to the audience and um, could be useful and and I think that the relation with the audience can be, uh, be become stronger. Mm -hmm. May I ask you something about this? Because uh, uh, audience engagement is now the, the, now the goal for every media content. So what, how you uh, build uh, every day this kind of relationship? What kind of relationship and what kind of tools you use in order to build a strong relationship with, uh, with the Italian audiences? Um, we choose an audience that is uh, a young audience, uh, not so young, but we choose an audience that is uh, from uh, 18 to 35 years old. Uh, and even our newsroom is made of journalists of this, uh, I mean, area. And uh, so we try to say, okay, we cover the main uh, uh, news. Uh, and we choose what we like, okay? And say to the audience, uh, I like, uh, we like this uh, movie. Uh, we think that it's important, or we think that it's uh, uh, useful, but sometimes we like it, and we talk about it because we like it. And, and maybe this is why now, even if uh, Open is a small uh, um, newspaper, we have a, a very strong, uh, relation with our audience. Uh, our data say that um, our audience uh, is engaged more with us than the audience of Corriere della Sera or Repubblica. There are very, very big uh, even uh, websites. Uh, our website is very um, healthy from this point of view. So the audience is very engaged. So many scholars and experts are talking about uh, transmedia journalism. No? What, do you, what uh, does it mean in your experience? So how do you approach this idea of transmedia journalism in uh, the open experience? Um, the main experimentation we are doing on transmedia journalism is trying to uh, tell a story from using different media and uh, trying to, I mean, not one media uh, beside the other, but together. Uh, we do it specifically when we do a reportage uh, using video and um, uh, text, mixing them. Uh, so video, text and uh, photos, mixing them uh, and without saying, okay, if I, say, if I see the video, I know all the story, or if I read the story, I know everything. Uh, if you want to um, follow us in our reportage, you have to use uh, video and then read uh, part of the story and then there is a photo. And this is a way that, okay, it's working. It's not perfect at the moment, we are trying to fix uh, which is the, the the good mix okay for this receipt but okay that's the idea of transmedia journalism we are trying to experiment okay. what is the role of social media in this project um 
Sometimes we uh, ask for to help our audience to um, answer to questions or send us questions. For example, for um, Labor Day, we ask to our audience to send a song for the Labor Day, and then we made a compilation that put it on Spotify, and that's a way of leaving Labor Day, but um, trying to use different media, that's not a media properly, but okay, as a way using music and using something so not journalistic like Spotify that worked out. And talking about your um, uh, professional routine, no? how this new journalism uh, are um, uh, addressing, are changing, we can say, are changing uh, the, the, the practices of journalism and, so, and what kind of competencies you need uh, in order to, uh, to work on video, uh, written news, uh, social media, so what kind of competencies, what kind of roles uh, you have to, uh, to involve in this, uh, in this new way of journalism. Um, we are working a lot on um, video and text uh, and using the social media, trying to engage people, just, uh, I mean, being the same people. I mean, journalists are at the same age um, of our audience, so they try to joke, but not to be, I mean, so trying to be serious, but not that much in using social media, okay? Mixing uh, different feelings on tone of voices, uh, explaining things on social media. And uh, so these two competences, video um, and I mean an attitude to social media are very useful. Um, the third is uh, uh, graphic. We uh, have, uh, I mean, a person specialized on, is, on this, but I think that in the future that will be more and more important and trying to visualize uh, with uh, graphics uh, or even with uh, cartoons, things can be useful and I hope we will do it more and more in the future. And uh, what about uh, the education? No? Young uh, journalists uh, need in order to uh, approach this kind of journalism, not to start the journalism profession. So what kind of, uh, of competence and skills and what kind of education they need? Okay, I think that um, it's a complicated situation now because you need uh, a competence on using uh, these uh, media, so video and social networks and maybe photos and maybe graphics and everything is very, very useful. But to face uh, uh, the complexity of the web, uh, I think that uh, uh, proper skills, like mm, I mean, to be uh, graduating law or in medicine or in uh, chemistry, can be useful because now the journalist has to be a okay, accountant and accountable, uh, countable and. Mm, um, I mean, to have the standing of facing the reality. So, for the future, I think that the journalist will be not so uh, just a person looking at the world, uh, walking around uh, and writing. That is not used. I mean, it's not enough anymore. But to know something very well uh, can help a journalist to be independent and the very. I think. That's the point now facing the web, to be uh, independent and strong in your competence. So you have to okay, say when you're wrong, but try to be very, very uh, strong on your legs. So stand properly facing the world. So you mentioned that it's important to build this uh, this kind of awareness and credibility now for journalism and what are uh, your uh, uh, your tools uh, in order to face with uh, this scenario which is made uh, made of uh, fake news uh, and lots of uh, uh, information which is not uh, controlled and verified what is uh, your uh, your uh, idea uh, of uh, 
uh, in terms of how to uh, fight against this kind of phenomenon. Okay. Um, I mean, one tip I think is that uh, don't take for guarantees nothing. I mean, don't take it for guarantees what a big uh, newspaper uh, abroad says because maybe uh, it's not completely true. We face uh, uh, we face um, a story like this uh, uh, last week uh, when we understood that. Uh, um, I mean, a story about a girl that um, said um, they, um, she, were, she killed herself uh, was not uh, um, as uh, this newspaper told us. Uh, and uh, a journalist, a couple of journalists, uh, honestly, working on this story, and they understood, I mean, what I like it in how they uh, understood that something uh, was uh, wrong, is that they didn't took everything uh, for I mean um, for warrant guaranteed. So they don't they didn't uh, started on this story. Say okay, all these newspapers say this, uh, so it's true, and try to verify everything line by line. So I think that to face fake news. Uh, don't take anything for true and verify line by line if everything is right. Mm -hmm. And um, about the um, uh, citizen journalism and collaborative journalism, no? what do you think about the, the idea of involving local members of community in order to, uh, to um, gain information from everywhere, from the, from the territory uh, around, uh, especially in context that can be complicated uh, now in terms of uh, uh, journalism, in terms of uh, reporting information from, uh, for example, I mean, uh, uh, crisis context or something similar. So mm. it's possible to, to create an engagement, a collaboration, a cooperation with uh, uh, local members of communities uh, in order to develop a sort of citizen journalism. I'm not a fan anymore of citizen journalism as I was 10 years ago. Uh, after 10 years of experimentation on citizen journalism, uh, not only on, on <laughs> open online, but um, I mean, looking at the general uh, uh, environment of journalism, I think that now we have to try it, but to be, I mean, mm, mm, aware of uh, the wrongs, the full steps uh, taken uh, till now. So I think that could work, but the important thing, uh, as I m mentioned before, is to verify everything. Uh, and I feel even then uh, local community sometimes need, uh, uh, I mean, a real journalist going there. Uh, instead of explaining their situation. So after, I mean, as I said, uh, in uh, 2019, I, I'm not so confident on this idea as I was in the past, to be honest. Okay, to conclude, uh, if you uh, are invited uh, to teaching to uh, students uh, in a journalism master, what kind of lessons you can uh, give them? So what kind of uh, suggestions, recommendations you can uh, provide them with? Um, I think uh, that the suggestion uh, specifically for this uh, classroom is to okay, don't focus only on what the traditional media say that is important, uh, but try to look at the reality as you feel it. Uh, so, don't look only to big news, uh, but look around uh, and try to find what is interesting and at what not. I mean, the the big media are not looking at. Um, that could be an, uh, I mean, a way to be different, to be a journalist, and to. Um, find something new that is not, uh, I mean, trying just to do what CNN in big is doing and you'll do it uh, in small. 
try to look around uh, um, to other stories that are not, mm, I mean, don't, mm, maybe you will be surprised uh, if you don't look only to main, uh, I mean, main breaking news. Uh, I think that uh, if you go around, you will be surprised and you will uh, find something interesting from the journalistic point of view. And maybe you will find a way to make big media looking at you and not vice versa. So, uh, thank you very much for your uh, interview and uh, you're welcome uh, in our master program if you want to teach and to have a, a meeting with our students next year. Thank, thank you. you.